All right, hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, episode 11. I am here joined today with Dave Toomey, Pete Everett, and of course, Matt Siebert. And I first want to start off by saying hello and welcome to 2019. We've had a couple weeks off here uh, during Christmas and New Year's, uh, so we miss seeing everybody here. And I'm glad uh, glad we got kept the conversation going in the group, but I'm ready to get back after some of these episodes and uh, get this thing going again. So uh, first of all, hello, Matt. How are you doing? How's 2019 treating you so far? It is treating me well. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again, but taxes are, are a, a burden, but otherwise, otherwise going well. Well, you know, if you make lots of money, you got to pay lots of taxes. So I kind of feel good about paying lots of taxes. That means I made lots of money. Yeah, but that check is still, uh, it hurts. It's like, yes, you know, no it's doubt. It's like this like chest bottom of the stomach feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. It is definitely real. And uh, I guess we'll say hello to Pete next. Pete, you've been on uh, on with us before, but never on a live show. So why don't you uh, say hello and introduce yourself and, and tell us all a little bit about yourself and what, what it is you do. Okay, so now I, now I understand that question properly. Um, I'm Pete Everett. I, uh, I'm an agency owner here in the UK. Um, so uh, it's it's getting dark outside at the minute, which is quite depressing. Um, I also run the Marketing Development Podcast, uh, and we have a Facebook group, and uh, that's that's basically me. Awesome. Well, I definitely think if anybody's not in Pete's group, you should definitely go join it. We'll make sure to add a link to the show notes, uh, and his podcast is great as well. The, the episode I was on is definitely the best one, but the rest are pretty good too. Had some dodgy artwork. Dodgy, for sure. <laughs> for sure. All right, and Mr. Dave Toomey, hello and good afternoon to you. I, I I will say, I think if anybody is on Facebook and has ever had anything to do with Beaver Builder, they already know who you are. But for the few people who are, are Elementor folks and haven't joined the Beaver Builder uh, groups, introduce yourself. Tell, tell, us self, tell us all about yourself. Element what? Element what? <laughs> no. No idea. Um, my name is Dave Toomey. Uh, much like Peter Everett, I own uh, an agency, but I'm based in Ireland. Um, and I am uh, fanboy number one of a certain page builder that is number one in the world uh, called Beaver Builder. <laughs> uh, no, it's my tool of choice. And, and Elementor is absolutely fine. In fact, I am a, I, I own Elementor Pro. I um, have never built a, a, a full site using it, but I play around. But um, it's just like you want to dig a hole, you pick a shovel or a spade. It's up to you, you know. And, and as long as it works and works well, and I know Elementor does as well. So, but I'm primarily known as a Beaver Builder guy. I'm the admin, the starter, the beginning guy for the Beaver Builders group. So we were the first page builder Facebook group um, that I'm aware of. Uh, and um, basically, we now have thirteen, fourteen thousand members in there and most of the people that you would know and that I would know from this neck of the woods uh, I met through that group Beaver Builder that's yep that's awesome. how I met you yeah and uh, just basically pretty much doing what everybody else does which is trying to you know provide good stuff for my clients that's the name of the game right there for sure. So today we are gonna be talking a little bit about email marketing. So we're gonna take a couple approaches to this. So one is gonna be talking about using email marketing for your own agency and how uh, you can use that effectively to grow your own business and also using email marketing uh, as a service you can provide for your clients. So. For instance, right before we got on this uh, this call, I was sending out an email for one of my clients to about 5,000 folks to uh, do a survey of his customers. Um, so that's something that I, I send out three emails a week for this client, um, and he pays me quite handsomely to do so. And little does he know, it's very easy to do. I have templates set up and everything, and he provides me the copy and then pays me all the money. So uh, there's definitely money to be made doing that. So uh, we'll start off with you, Dave. Do you uh, do you do any kind of email marketing for your own business? Um, I do. Now, the thing is, I'm transitioning. The, the 1st of January seems to be a... a, it's a, a complete new beginning for me and my agency in, in, in the sense that it was what I've done up until recently is it's been a side hustle for me and my transition over the last couple of months has been towards moving towards a full-time um, job as my agency and 
one of the biggest growers for that is email marketing. So yes, I do. I use email marketing in my own agency. But it's not just about email. It's about how you use the email. Um, so basically, you know, the, the old adage at the moment seems to be email is dead, long live social media or Facebook. But, you know, everything is come and go, you know. Think of MySpace and Snapchat and things like that. But the thing that everybody uses day in, day out, what we, you know, we all use and have done since the beginning of, of the internet is email. So not only is it an easy sell to my clients because they understand the email compared to Facebook advertising, compared to LinkedIn advertising, you know, all the other stuff. It's easier to connect with an audience because you're not fighting for their attention. You, you know, you can use all those marketing stuff to gain their attention, but once you have it, the easiest, the simplest, and the least resistance to getting their attention and, and using that is email. Um, as long as you're not an ass with it, you know? I'm an so ass. I'm just not an ass with my email. <laughs> There's a difference. But it, it, it's true, you know, if you, you know, we talk about in marketing, um, you know, to get to, you know, know, like, and trust somebody. And there's no easier way to do it than um, with email. You don't have to be a video celebrity. You don't have to have a great voice and have a podcast. You don't have to have subscribers on YouTube. But these are all channels that you can feed into your email list. But, you know, it comes down to actually interacting with people that you do not know because you're not meeting them in a restaurant for a meal. You're not going to a cafe and putting a proposal in front of them. These are people that do not know you but want to know more about you. And you're given that opportunity to sell your services. You're given that opportunity to, to build trust in their eyes. And these are complete strangers. And you can do it really, really well with good email. I, I agree with you 100%. And I do want to get into some of the specifics on that. But I want to first ask Pete, are you using email for your own business to uh, to help you grow? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got... Um, with our with our agency, we do have some email that we use. We don't utilize it as much as we could. Um, that's that, that's just that's just the way it is. Our, our agency is one of those. It's it's one of those things that we get so busy that it's our own stuff that suffers. Um, the however, what what I am doing, I uh, through the podcast, I'm starting to run some courses. And the very first one of those is actually, uh, it, it's, it's an email course, or it's a course delivered via email about optimizing web pages for SEO. So um, that's, that's something that's come through talking with my audience in my group and some, some messages that I've had with some of the key parties in there. We've, um, uh, you know, I, I, get asked, I get asked the same questions a number of times. Um, and actually delivering, putting that down, uh, Lots of lots of people that, that I come into contact with, you know, they don't want another place to sign into. They don't want another another thing that they've got to go and subscribe to this or forgot my password for that or this, that, and the other. And actually, what, what we've started to do is develop some resources that actually get delivered directly to their inbox. So, yeah, okay, they've got to come and they've got to sign up to, a, to a, an email delivery from, from us. But actually, it, it's a mechanism of delivering the content to them in a way that they, you know, it pops into the palm of their hand in their phone. And if they're ready for it, they can read it. If not, they can leave it there and come to it, come to it later. But it, it's, we're using it as a mechanism to deliver content to people in a way that's easy for them to consume. Awesome. And I do, I want to go around the room here because I'm going to try to eventually get to a point I'm illustrating. But uh, Matt, how about you? Are you using any email for your agency? I'm not. And um, one of the reasons behind that is that I do very little marketing uh, for myself. Um, I'm at, I, I, I've, I've been, I've been lucky in the, in the fact that uh, I don't, I don't really have to reach out, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and I haven't for, uh, for years, like it's, um, it's referrals and it's, uh, it's, it's probably 50% uh, recurring clients about 30 percent referrals and the rest is um is just my my website pulling people in and i'll add for myself i've i've started and stopped with emails several times and i think i think we all kind of anybody who's dabbled in trying to send out emails for their own agency has probably started and stopped a couple times so it's true i mean uh, I, I have uh, i have a mailchimp account i have i have it all set up and ready to go but i just i haven't haven't done it yet yeah. So for me, like, like uh, Dave was talking about, you know, 2019 is a good time to 
tip for some new beginnings anytime you start the new year. So I've actually uh, been going at it a little bit different angle than trying to really get new customers. It's more about keeping in more contact with my care plan customers and my existing customers because I do have customers that I know uh, are perfectly fine not hearing from me for months. Uh, as long as all their stuff's working, they're happy and they're glad to pay the bill and move on with it. But I do feel like, you know, out of sight, out of mind is a thing. And I'm devaluing myself if I don't remind my clients what it is I'm doing for them or provide more value to them. So one thing I'm working on is creating some content specific uh, to my care plan customers and and sending out a lot of that through email and kind of communicating with them that way. So uh, that kind of takes takes uh, the temperature in the room here. But I did do a poll in the group this morning and I asked, uh, <clears throat> do you have or maintain an email list for your business? And we got, uh, I don't know, 30 something answers. Um, the, the majority, 19 of them said yes, 12 of them said I don't, but I need to. And two of them, or let's see, three of them, you might need to add a digit to all those because I obviously can't read or count, uh, said nope. And no one answered, uh, I did, but don't anymore. So it looks like, you know, the slight majority of us in the group are using email in some form or fashion. So I know one of the questions people talked about in here was, having trouble being consistent about sending emails out and the other one knowing uh, what you should be sending out in emails. So Pete, I'm going to start with you and can you give us any kind of tips on what kinds of things you could be sending out in your emails as far as for your own agency? For your own agency. Well, first of all, can I just, uh, let me just talk about how to stay consistent with it. And the Well, then we'll, we'll switch. I'll give you that okay. question. I'll give Dave the other one. Oh, all right, that works for me. All I was all I was going to say was batching. If you batch it, so if you've got if you're sending out weekly emails, you've got four emails a month to write. Stick aside two or three hours, one you know on the first Monday of the month, whatever it might be, and just hammer them out. Get them, get them. They don't have to be perfect, but get them teed up. The first the first one that's going to go, that one needs to be um, in probably slightly better shape than the others. But then get them out, and then if you planned in time just to review, literally just before you hit the send button, that would be the um, that would be what I'd. Uh, that, that's the way I do it anyway, and that, that's the way I do a lot of my content. My podcasts are exactly the same. Um, batch it, and then and then sort of review before shipping. The other thing I would say is it's really important to have that review process before uh, before you schedule something. So. Um, you know, we, I once held some content back for 24 hours just because there was uh, a terrorist attack down in London. And actually, it just seemed a bit insensitive for me just to push something out for my business just because mm -hmm. I always do it on a Monday and this had happened right. on a Monday. So I, I, I do have the, uh, I, I, it's, it's not always the day I, I'm going to send it out. And in that instance, I did manage to catch it. But the, um, I, I do have sort of a check that is far closer to, to the, the piece of content going out just it, it just makes me feel better about it personally yeah and i've i've been trying to do that a little bit you know i just started with with what i'm doing now uh and it's you know you, you got to build up a little bit of runway to get going with it so I, I am trying to do that but i've done the same thing as you as you know i've set up a little reminder in my calendar uh to remind me and go check that before that email scheduled to go out so i can make sure that everything uh you know, I wasn't completely high when I wrote it or, uh, you know, everything still makes sense. So it's always good to go back and check that. Another uh, piece of advice I gave somebody in the group was, you know, as far as this subject is, you know, and, and you kind of mentioned it was scheduling these things. So I've, I've been putting it in my project management system, just like it's a customer's job. So uh, content that I need to put together, emails that I need to send out, all that goes into my content or my project management system. So it's not easy to put to the side because like you said, it's, it's really easy for our own stuff to get pushed aside because we're working on customer stuff. So I've been trying to treat myself as a customer, you know, in that same way. So Dave, let me ask you, uh, for the people that struggle with what kind of content or what kinds of things they should be putting out in email, do you have any tips for agencies looking to uh, send out some emails? What kinds of things could they be sending out to their customers or potential clients? Uh, I, I want Pete's question. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, he stole it. Darn it. No, look, it's, it's fairly simple, right? Your customers don't want to hear about bits and bytes and kilobytes and megabytes and all that kind of stuff. All they want is connection, right? So it's stories. All you got to remember is 
if you're done for the evening and you go down the local alehouse for a drink and you sit down and your customer sits next to you and goes, hey, Dave, how's it going? What's happening? Well, the, the, the connection you two have at the moment is that you build a website for this person. You provide a service for that person. You're not going to start talking about tech news. You're going to talk about how's your day? How are you getting on? Well, today, um, I might tomorrow, I might sit down and write an email to my clients about perfection. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can overcome obstacles just by showing up and doing stuff. And it's the same about looking after your website. You don't have to wait until everything's perfect. Let's get that site live, that landing page live. Let's do this kind of stuff. Today, or I'll say in the email yesterday, I had a Facebook Live with some of my colleagues, and it was a total disaster for the first 10 minutes because the technology was messing up, and it was my fault. But at the end of it, we were able to edit the video, and it turned out it was a fantastic 40 minutes of a discussion. So, you know, that's a story. But that connects with my client way better than something like, oh, yeah, did you see Google release this new thing today? You know, you don't need to tell people technology stuff. You don't need to give them news for the industry. They don't care. They have their own industry. They have their own needs. But it's always good to be able to say, well, what I want to do is I want to explain to my client and my customers that I'm on top of all these technology problems. So let's have a little bit of a story. Let's, let's weave in stories into, you know, the, the boring stuff. But just as long as you're, you're entertaining, and you don't have to be telling jokes all the time. It's just, you know, like I said, just imagine sitting down with your client customer for a social occasion and just chatting, having a coffee or a beer or something and, and, and be like that in your emails. And if you take that approach, you know, there's a famous email marketer and his, his, his famous quote is nothing bad ever happens to an email marketer because that's a story you can tell people who read your emails and think of it the exact same way in your agency. You, you don't have ever have bad things you need to tell you can wrap it up in a story and do the same with the good stuff and i can give you content and emails forever you know it doesn't have to be oh i need to come up with some high tech thing to email you know. just in, send them an email and say it's monday you know i hope you're getting on well don't forget you need to do this this and this on your site or it's monday and don't forget we've done this for you because of xyz and that connected into some you know, an allergy or something like that. Just, just be nice and, and, and relaxed about it. I think what people in agencies in particular is they get wrapped up in this whole thing about, I have to put on a front that we're some, you know, corporate thing, you know, with MBAs coming out of our ear holes. They're, you know, the mo most of the people that are buying and uh, your services are, are, are connecting with you, they don't care about that. In fact, they think the opposite. They don't like that. They like the connection. They like the personality behind brands. Even if you work for a large corporation, the connection is with you as an individual. So, you know, that's what your email should be like. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. And I, I, I kept thinking of Kim Doyle's voice in my head talking about everything is content. And, you know, I heard her say that for a long time. And obviously the sentence makes sense to me, but the, the whole, uh, I don't know, feeling behind it never never connected with me until I, I can't now I can't even remember what happened but I remember I stopped down and wrote her when it when it all made sense I'm like man everything really is content and, and for example um, I sent out an email to my list yesterday and uh, I kind of tied in a lesson I was talking about with getting uh, getting your information listed in directories and citations and stuff like that for your business and how important that is. But the way I brought up that whole story was, or that whole subject was through a story in the email where, uh, you know, me and my family were looking at this new barbecue place that opened up and I'm looking them up everywhere online and I can't find any information about them. So we didn't go there for three weeks, you know? Um, and then we finally went there and it was great and the portion sizes were big and the food, you know, food was excellent and it was cheap and man, why the hell aren't they telling people this? You know, so that was the whole story. And, and we'll see if that uh, that gets any kind of connection with people. But I, I definitely think you're right. And telling stories is the way to go about it, because anytime I talk tech with my customers, it's completely lost on them. It's ground with me and you chatting, you know, we understand that but our customers don't want to listen to it. They've got their own tech issues to be dealing with in their businesses. They don't listen to our tech problems. You know, it's like you said, they just expect it to be done and done well. And, and that's a, a reasonable expectation. But there's so much more you can talk to people about, you know? and that that 
example that you gave about a you know, company that's been open for a number of weeks, if they put a one page thing up that just said, we have open and our website's a bit behind schedule, here's here's a link to a PDF with our menu and, and here's a couple of Facebook photographs on Facebook of, of our opening night. You know, that's that's four emails, you know, that they could have been doing with an opt-in on their, their homepage before it went live. Yeah, for sure. So but it's also it was also an opportunity for you to get in there and go, hey guys, this is what I do, you know, you should have employed me, you know. Because now when they open up the next branch five minutes up the road, they're gonna be prepared for it. Yeah, that's for sure. Now, Pete, your your agency does a lot of uh digital marketing and you obviously have the, the marketing and development podcast. So is part of the digital marketing services you offer to clients actually running um email campaigns for your clients' businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we try and be a little bit more intelligent about it. Um, largely for, for a lot of the reasons that, that we've just talked about, to be honest, because as soon as, you, as soon as you start talking to a client about, right, we're going to do email marketing for you, they, they say they start providing you with content like, look at this new plaque that we have just had in our foyer. And no, nobody gives it. Nobody gives a toss to be honest um so we we try and be a little bit more targeted with it um, and tie it into their business needs but actually the thing with email marketing that we're providing for clients is that it, it's a really easy way and kind of as dave was saying earlier it's an easy way for people to understand the value that we're adding the results that we're getting for clients you know and you can tie sales or leads back to emails that you've sent or um we've done things with We've done things with, um, I don't want to use the word funnel, they're not technically funnels, but for example, we work with a supplier of hot tubs and depending on how frequently you, you use a hot tub, that, that sort of um, predicts the frequency that you need to change the chemicals in the hot tub, for example. So we send out, if you buy a hot tub from our client, um, four weeks after delivery, you'll get an email, just a standard follow, uh, well, say standard, it's a nice follow-up email, wanting to know a little bit about your experience of shopping with us, and also asking you your habits about how you use a hot tub. And then depending on the answer that you give in that sort of mini survey that's linked to that, you will then receive an email that's on an auto, an auto send sort of somewhere between six and 12 weeks later, depending on how much you use your hot tub, saying, we think it's about time you you, uh, you change the the chemicals in your hot tub. Um, here's a link to all of our chemical kits, and you know for your brand of hot tub, we recommend X Y Z product, and, and here you go. And all of a sudden, you know that took us not very long to set up. The some of our copywriters wrote some engaging copy and looked at the questions and all that kind of stuff. But actually, it's a way that the customer is reminded every time they sell a chemical kit that they have put zero effort into that their agency has started printing them profit margin. So we try and get a little bit more intelligent about it. We don't really do a lot of emails for clients, which are, here's our monthly newsletter with the top six things that happened in our business this month anymore, because that, that kind of email just doesn't get the traction that we want to demonstrate value to our clients. So you're, you're more working on like automation type things for them. Um, in, in that instance, yes, we are. Um, but the, you know, we, we do other things surrounding new product launches, uh, trade shows. Uh, we, we try and look at it, though. Uh, we try and look at the, the email aspect as part of a bigger strategy. We, we're not just doing email for the sake of doing email. We're doing, we're doing email because there's a business goal or there's a lead generation goal or there's um, you know, something, a new product that's coming or a, an event that the client's going to, the, there is something behind it that we're trying to build exactly what Dave said, the knowledge, the trust, and the, the likeliness of, of our client to their own customers. I think that's a pretty smart way to go about it for sure. So, uh, <clears throat> Dave, how about on your end? Are you, uh, are you using email marketing as a service you provide to your clients? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, there's a couple of ways that it can be done. Um, the firstly is is you know, it, I don't like to offer you know writing emails on a, on a daily basis or a weekly basis because that has to come from the voice of the business owner or the brand that the company has decided that the voice you know has to come from the brand. It, it, it's more a case of, you know, um, getting people into their funnels now. I know Dave Foy is probably your man to talk about funnels, but, you know, a lot of my customers are saying, well, uh, I, you know, I'm landing on this website. 
that you've created. That's fantastic. And we know we've agreed that our offer is to get people on the email list. And then once I have them on the email list, I want to do X, Y, Z. Now that's where I come, you know, there's again, the technology side of it. And then there's the segmentation that Pete alluded to already, you know, where you're offering ways to bring their customers through a process where at the end of it, they're more inclined to buy without resistance. So using email marketing to gain the um, know, like, and trust. So it's, it's, it's the, the technology behind it, the steps, you know, informing the clients and, and educating them about how email can be used to make these things happen automatically and putting in place emails. So we would call them in the business that it's, it's, it's more of an autoresponder than a broadcast. Whereas, you know, email in terms of broadcasting on a, a new weekly newsletter or a monthly news has to really come from, from client, the clients themselves. But we, I, I would spend a lot of time working on how they should do that. Again, very down to earth, not full of images, not full of offers, not full of everything. Keep it very, very simple and very clean. Because when I work with clients in the digital consultancy side of things, I, you know, the way I say to them is, you know, there's really only three bits to the process. Is you get traffic in, then you collate that traffic and educate them and, and whatever, and then you send them to an offer. Now that sounds very salesy, very marketing, but you can break down any business into that process and email marketing is exactly the same. So when we are offering that as a service to clients, it's look, when people land on this great site that we've created, what are you doing with them? Well, I put them on the email list. Okay. What's next? And then you can help them and educate them because all of that kind of stuff is double dutch to them. So you're the expert. So you're offering a service of a consultancy and getting the thing done, but you can also offer, you know, the whole process of the email marketing. In, in, in the autoresponder side of things. I'd be very, very wary of offering a service where you're actually taking over all the writing of the emails. You might want to outsource that if that's what your client really, really wants. Um, Todd Jones, I think, is a, guy, a good guy in our community for content writing. Todd does a lot of email stuff. I'm pretty sure, off the top of my head, I can't remember Todd's company's name. That's copy, copy, <coughs> copy flight. Yep. There you go, copy flight. So somebody like Todd would be great that maybe you could white label some of the, the emails that you want to write for your clients. But the thing to remember is these are processes that we as marketers, you know, for want of a better term, geeky people, we think that it's easy. Like you said there at the beginning of the whole thing that you do something three times a week for a client and charge him a lot of money and it's easy. And he doesn't realize that it's easy. It's not easy to him at all. Right. Like, I mean, I pay a guy once a year to come and service my boiler for my heating system because by law it has to be done. I couldn't do it. But it only takes him 20 minutes, but he charges me a fortune. But I'm worried about my kid's health, so I'm going to make sure it's done, you know? So it's the same with email. You know, don't think of providing email as a service as something that has to be a, you know, I, I can't do it, you know? If you can build a web pro WordPress website, you can build an email funnel. You know, and you can charge for it. You can maintain that funnel the same as you'd have a care plan for a WordPress website. You've got a care plan for a funnel. You know? uh, and I don't know, you guys have Dave Foy on here already. So, you know, it's, it's it, you know, connecting that and doing that as a service for your client. Very, very simple. And they will get so much value out of an email service compared to social media. Like, I mean, it drives me up the wall thinking about, you know, how much, um, People like us have spent, um, not us, but, but, but freelancers, you know, do so much work providing free social media services for clients. And they're getting pennies on the dollar. They're not figuring out for the time. If they could invest that time in setting up systems that involve email, their clients would get such a bigger return that they'd be able to charge more for it and, and get what they're worth. Um, yeah, I, I think you made a point that I was going to, uh, discuss here with Matt too, because I know it's something we've talked about. Before I do though, Pete, I do have an idea for your hot tub customer. Go on then. Not only like how often are they using their hot tub determines on the chemical balance you need to, you need to also survey them on what they're doing in the hot tub because <laughs> that might determine how often they need to change that stuff out too. So you're welcome for that free tip. I'll, I'll pitch that one to them. I'll let you know. 
Okay, thanks. So I know, Matt, we've talked about this several times and Dave just brought it up is, you know, I think we all have a little bit of imposter syndrome because we spend so much time in these groups. And I spend time talking to people like uh, Pete and Dave that are that are brilliant folks. And, and I feel like, man, I just I really don't quite know what I'm doing yet, you know. But when we go and talk with our customers, you know, we're, we forget that we're light years ahead of them on the marketing and technical side of it. So what what Pete and Dave are both talking about is kind of like a mixture between the actual technical side of how do I make all these email things work and also the strategic marketing side of it is, uh, you know, how do I make these engaging for customers or what is the strategy behind this? How is this going to drive sales for my business? So, um, you know, how do you think of that when you when you go talk to your clients, Matt? Um, you know, how do you kind of approach some of those marketing type things, you know, that relate you know, to this topic or, or show that you're an expert in it? Well, um, like, you know, like I said earlier, like I don't really do too much about uh, the whole email world. Um, so like, I mean, this is super interesting to me. I've been a little bit quiet, just taking everything in. <clears throat> um, however, like if it's, if it's, uh, if it's just, you know, marketing and trying to get, you know, customer a to, to do something. Um, I have a client right now who's, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the dead of winter right now. And, uh, it's a golf course. You know, I've, I've mentioned them a, a couple of times. Um, there's not much golf to be played now, uh, uh, like this time of year. So, um, the, the holidays were, they, they just happened. Um, and you know, a lot of proposals happen during that, uh, that time of year. So they're, their goals right now is, you know, it's, it's holiday brides and functions and banquets and, and all of that. That's what their, that's what their goals are right now. Um, so, you know, you, you, you approach the client and you ask them pretty bluntly, like, what, what do you, what do you want? What are the goals? And you just kind of work back from there. Like, okay, so you want, you want weddings to be hosted. You want functions, bridal showers, those types of things okay so who are those clients and you just you work your way all the way back to the the very beginning and see how you how you do that and you know it's gonna vary from uh from client to client but they they know their business far better than than you do of course and i think that in asking the right questions during this conversation they'll guide you and you'll guide them and you'll kind of meet in the middle and find that they already sort of know like how how to do it but it's the questions that you ask and and how you uh how you you know bring everything together that that creates that plan yeah i think that's a great point i think you know sometimes they need they need somebody like you to help kind of connect the dots like email is important, website's important, customers are important, selling weddings is important, but how do we make all those things work in harmony? Right. And I mean, they know their customers, you know, they've been in business for, for however many years they've, you know, they're, they're every day they're interacting with these people. So they know what their likes are, what their dislikes are. And, and even if it's not like quantifiable, as far as like, you know, it's, it's been studied and we've got analytics and all of that stuff, they still probably have a pretty good idea, you know, just in, just in, communicating with them on a, on a daily basis, like who these people are. Um, and yeah, so it, it does, it takes, and it, it's similar to, uh, to like when you call me or I call you and, um, you know, we just, sometimes it's just talking it out with somebody that, that gets that side of it and everything falls into place. And I think that a lot of this, uh, like is, is it's exactly that, you know, you're, you're almost a therapist in a way like you, you want them to almost have that like epiphany aha moment. Um, it's easier for one uh, to, to sell that idea if it's theirs. So you lead them into that, that direction and, and with your knowledge on, on how A equals B equals C, you know, you're able to guide them to, uh, to agree with you. Um, like this is, this is the best way to acquire these new, uh, these new clients. Yeah, I think that's all uh, that's all spot on to, to kind of how I see it, too. Now, I do want to get into one more question before we I, I really have no idea how long this has been going because we started and stopped so many times in the beginning. We're, uh, we're about but, a half an hour in, I think. Uh, OK, well, Chris we, also has had a question that I, I think is worth reading. OK, go for it. I, I, I don't see any of them on here. Oh, so. OK, um, so Chris, be, 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 before you do, oh, Matt, yes. 
before you move on. I just want to, you're a golf customer. The thing about it is somebody like you would say something like that and my marketing brain starts ticking over and start going like, you know, ADHD. Right. So, I mean, and email in specific, specifically email, the, the thing I'd be asking your client is during the, during the summer, you've got exclusively pretty much middle-aged guys with a lot of money playing golf. Mm-hmm. And have you got their email addresses? Because come the winter, you need to be promoting your venue as the place for weddings, parties, bar mitzvahs, sweet 16s, all that kind of stuff. And who's paying for those events in a household? Right. The middle-aged dad who plays golf during the summer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be offering a service to that client and saying, you know, look, your email list is, is, is really important. Are you collecting emails of these guys playing around the golf? Yeah, and they are. Guys- like the, the info that they were able to give me um, when I first signed on was absolutely stunning. I mean, they had, I don't know how much, uh, like, they must have spent to, uh, to gain this insight, but it was, it was incredibly helpful. And the, the majority of them at that time, um, I think, like, you know, user base on their website, at least, like, tracking that, it was all, uh, it was, like, 45 plus, like, 45 to 55 um though they 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 really wanted to get into the um the younger crowd you know uh somewhere between like 25 to to 35 um and luckily we were able to do that within a couple of months like that's it's it's split pretty much down the middle now um which is which is pretty cool fantastic why don't you uh read chris's question to us sorry yeah, no worries. Um, so Chris asked, "Do you uh, do you create the lead magnets for the clients, or uh, do you have them create those those resources?" Yeah, Pete, why don't you uh, handle that one for us? Um, it depends. Yeah, I think <laughs> I kind of figured that was going to be the answer. Uh, yeah, it, it, it depends. Um, uh, with the with the hot tub client, for example, um, they they had this like mega detailed brochure that was already created about um you know sort of uh put, putting a hot tub in your home and the 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 some of the technical things you have to think about and this and it was just going to be pointless for us to re- we'd just be rewriting something that they've already got so they they kind of had something we optimized it for web we you know we, we made it a bit smaller low res and that kind of thing but we didn't we didn't create anything with other clients however um and with my own stuff um, I, well, with my own stuff, obviously I create it, but with, with other clients, you know, they maybe don't have that resource and we can, we often talk to them about, okay, so the, the simplest place to start is, right, so what are your top five queries that you get from every customer that comes in? When, when you're talking to your cust- potential customers on the phone, what is the thing that you are saying over and over and over and over and over again? And right, we'll create a lead magnet around that. And sometimes that's a download, sometimes it's a PDF, sometimes it's a, if we can get the client to be brave enough, maybe a video that gets pinged out to them um, or a still of the video that gets pinged out to them to, to link to the video, but some, some kind of resource. Because at the end of the day, somebody is entrusting you with their, a piece of personal information that has value. So, you know, it, it is right really that, that they get something back in return. Yeah, and, and you know, that, resource, that kind of leads into the- resource for something like that, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Dave. I was going to say a good resource for that for your clients as much as for yourself is a book called You Ask, They Answer um, by Marcus Sheridan. He stays, speaking of pools and hot tubs, he started out, he's he's now a big speaker and consultant and all that kind of stuff. But he basically turned around a company that was failing that he was a hard owner of with content marketing. Um, and he basically says, what you're doing is answering the questions that your clients are asking yourself. So creating a lead magnet isn't that difficult for an established business. It's harder for a business that's brand new and doesn't understand their, their, their target market, which is a bad thing anyway. But, um, it, you know, ask, you, it, Pete was in a perfect situation there where the client had already done this. But asking, you know, they ask, you answer. It's, it's as simple as that. Client, you should know what your target audience is, what their main questions are, because they ask you day in, day out. You put together a list of 40, 50 questions that you get asked on a regular basis, compile that together, and you've got a, a seven email series or a PD, one page PDF with the six points or you know that kind of stuff. So it, it's not as difficult a thing to do as we tend to make it out. 
And the other side of it is if you've got those answers and everything, again, somebody like Todd's, you know, copy service, copy flight, they could take that information and turn it into something, you know, that has a bit more value. If you're not a writer. The, the very first lead ma magnet I generated when I set up PeteEverett.com, in fact, I think it's still on there. The, um, but the very first one I, so I, I wanted to, I launched this website. I wanted to start building a list really quickly. The, one of the questions I get asked, like more than any other, is how do you map keywords to content, keywords to website structure? So my lead magnet was actually an Excel document, which had all the columns in and then two or three example rows based on my own website of mapping keywords to, to pages. And that was it. it. It took me, what, less than five minutes to put together. Um, and uh, it, it's, there's a little pop-up. You put your email address in, I email you the, I email you the Excel document. That was it. You know, it, was, it, it, it was that easy. So it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be a 47-page ebook. It, if it's the, the value in the Excel document is the client can then, or the, the recipient can then use it. Um, so that, that was, yeah, you, sometimes you don't need to, don't overthink it. It's what will, what is of use. Yeah, you got to think about it, or at least this is the way I think about like lead magnet stuff is, you know, if you're trying to scale or trying to judge how valuable does this thing need to be, it only needs to be valuable enough that somebody's willing to trade you their email address for it. You know, it can be more valuable than that. And that's great. You know, if you can provide more value, that's, that's wonderful. But if it's something that you think is worth trading your email address for, it's worth doing as a lead magnet. So like you, you said, your example, uh, I did one, I just tied one into a blog post that I wrote where I was talking about, um, like using, a print marketing and being able to like track your ROI on print marketing by, you know, sending people to like a specific landing page or something with the print collateral. And so I did a little calculator in Excel that they could calculate their ROI on a print thing. So it was, it was simple. I mean, it was just a little formula of how much did your print stuff cost? How much did it cost to mail it out? You know, uh, how much, how many people did you get on the website from that? You know, and it's just a little calculator. And I, I had a ton of people sign up for it. And it was something literally anybody could have done, but it was just put in the right spot at the right time, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're like, hey, you know, I, I'm willing to trade my email address to have this calculator and figure out how to do this, you know? So one, one question I did want to make sure we got into a little bit uh, before we end this is, you know, I think part of this is agencies kind of struggle with this thought and our customers, I know for a fact struggle with this because it's a conversation I have with them a lot. Uh, they kind of will compare email marketing with social media marketing and kind of uh, compare and contrast those things. And, and it all kind of goes back to you don't own Facebook and you don't own Twitter and they control the whole ball game over there. And at least with your email list, it's something that you own you know, you can take this anywhere you want to go with it. Um, and, and there for a while, having a audience on a face, your business Facebook page, you know, you could probably get more views on those posts than you got opens and emails, or it was, you know, it was probably trending that way. But with the way Facebook's been in the last, I don't know, six, eight months, you know, you're, you're back to email marketing being more uh, productive for sure, as far as at least getting eyeballs on your content. So, mm. What what kind of, uh, you know, what do you see as far as the difference between email marketing and social media marketing and kind of separating those things because they are two different things and the importance of having both of them. I'll let you both kind of give your, your take on that. Pete, if you want to kick us off. Um, I think you need to understand your audience. I've, I've never sold a website on Facebook. Um, or a digital marketing retainer on Facebook because the people that I want to do business with when they're on Facebook, they're not in the, like um, they're not in the mindset. Yeah. The, the, it's the wrong environment. If you're selling a luxury product, if you're selling a, a Swiss pair of trainers, whatever, that's, that's absolutely, that, that can work over there. That, that's not got a, you know, it's not a problem, but I'm re the clients I want to attract to my business are, agency owners uh, so not agency owners uh, business owners that have a need or want to develop their business online so that that said i've won from all the social networks i've won far more business on linkedin because and the, through the connections i have on there than than any I've, I've not sold anything on facebook um when it comes to email marketing however it it is about 
through the through the technology, I suppose it's a bit easier for those of us that, that get the way the process works and get the way the technology works. It, it You can start using segmentation. You can start um, looking at even just knocking out uh, unsubscribes, for, um, sorry, um, non-openers as unsubscribes from your list and all that kind of stuff. You can very... Uh, over a period of time, you can very easily start to nurture that list yourself into um, a list that is your target audience. Um, and from there, it is then far easier to be front of mind when that user is at the right time. Again, the, the, the clients I'm trying to attract when I get in touch with them, that it may not be the right time for them to take that leap. They might have something else going on in their business, their personal life, whatever. That might be something that they're wanting to push to next year. So it's about being front of mind with that customer at the time that they are ready to talk to me about it. Um, so that's, I don't know if that honestly answers your question, but that's why I view it anyway. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's great. Dave, you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think it's just a different way of putting it would be with email, I can talk to my potential client with social media, media. I always feel like I'm having to shout. Mm. And that's the way I would consider it is that I, I'm sometimes in a mood for messing about and go on Facebook and, you know, just an hour goes by, half an hour goes by and I'm just looking at nonsense, but I don't make any buying decisions. I don't make any corporate decisions. I don't do anything on Facebook. Um, uh, but an email, I, I, there's a process to it. it it's a courtship. You know, it's, you know, you're getting to know me. I'm getting to know you. We're having a chat, you know, it's, uh, you know, first date, second date, third date, you know, let's, you know, see how it goes. But with social media, unless you're in a group situation and that group is very, very small, it's very difficult to do that. Um, my favorite group that I'm in, in Facebook has 20, 25 people in it. And it's because we're not shouting at each other. And then I'm the admin of a group with 13, and a half thousand members in and it's very very difficult because there will be people in there that are core members of the group for the last six months and i've seen two posts from them because i'm trying to work my way through all of the noise um, and and you know we try our best with it but that's you know when you look at it like that from a client point of view if you get an email from me and yes you understand it's not a responder and i'm not necessarily talking to you personally but i, I i'm trying to talk to you uh, and feel what you're feeling and and give you an explanation about how I want to help and be sincere about it. There's more of a connection. There's more of a personal connection to it than you would actually see on social media. And that would be why, apart from that, I own my email list, um, Biggie. Um, and the second Biggie is I can segment my list much easier. Um, then that would, be, that would be my reasoning why email is 10 times better than social media. Yeah, I think that might be the the first clip I pull out of this is on social media, you're shouting and on email, you're talking, you know, I think that's a great analogy to, to kind of how we all feel. All right, I know we're, we're running up against time here. And I appreciate y'all uh, hanging out with us. I do want to uh, go over a couple things here. Pete, uh, I know we didn't talk a whole lot about we didn't get too deep into all the things you can do with email, but I know you have a, an email course coming out. So it's actually an SEO course that you're delivering via email. Is that that's correct? right? Yeah, okay. that's right. So, um, so uh, th this again, it comes down to something that I get asked quite a lot, which is how do you optimize a web page for SEO? So I've put together a five, um, five part email course that gets delivered over five days straight to your inbox and walks you through running an audit report, uh, doing your keyword research, then applying that onto onto a web page, and then we do some stuff about image optimization and that kind of thing. And so it's it's actionable. You do it on your own website. You just follow the steps that I give you. That's uh, and to find that, if you go to peteverett.com forward slash SEO email course, you can sign up there. Yeah, and I'll make sure to add that link. Uh, I've already signed up, so uh, I'm going to be optimized as Pete is, which will be a good thing for me. And uh, Mr. Dave, do you got anything you want to promote on here today, yeah. buddy? Well, we're the exclusive. Um, I wasn't yeah. going to do this yet, but I'm going to go ahead and announce my... Uh, do we my, need a uh, drum roll? Oh, yeah. A drum roll. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm starting a new um, thing. 
So it'll include lives like these, but mostly podcasting and community called Marketing for Geeks. So as you can see, branded already. Image nice. Too. Yeah. So the, the whole point is, yeah, I'm not going to be teaching everything. It'll be, I'll be teaching some of the stuff that I know and like, but I want to talk to experts in the marketing field that I have connections with that are outside of the, the geek world of freelancing, tech, WordPress, all that kind of stuff, but have something that we could all learn from. So basically, I want to help us in the, 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 this side of the community go forward with our businesses through marketing. And like I said, it's not all about me teaching you everything that I know. It's about me finding people and bringing those connections in. And I've got a couple of names that people would recognize, um, big names lined up. So I'm launching that sort of, I think it's the 4th of March. I'm going to give myself a decent lead up time, but there will be a weekly podcast and weekly live. But it will be all about growing your business through marketing. And what I found is that most of my friends that are in this business are just afraid of it, afraid of it. And it's, it's about simplifying things and moving your business forward. And I'm going to be learning just the same as everybody else. So if you want to go to marketingforgeeks.com, there is nothing there except a logo and an opt-in box. <laughs> uh, and it, it will offer you a one-page lead magnet, which I still haven't done. So it'll be it'll be going out later in the week or next week. Like I said, I wasn't. It wasn't well, you great. just you just got done telling us how easy it was to do. So yeah, you're, exactly, you're behind the exactly, curve on that. Exactly my point. Exactly my point. <laughs> right. Why, why mess around? I, st I put that up in up this morning because I knew I was coming on. Oh, okay, but, uh, awesome. Yeah, there you go. But no, it's, it's like I said, it's due to go in March. So, but uh, sign up if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll make sure to include the notes on that as well. So I, I certainly appreciate y'all jumping on with us. I'm glad to have both of you on the show because I know uh, we probably could have gone a whole lot deeper into all this. So we'll definitely have you back and we'll talk some more about it. Matt, did I forget anything? Do you need anything you need to add to this conversation? No, I think we uh, we covered a lot. But like you said, there's uh, we could definitely dig deeper. But Anytime. not today. Not today. <laughs> Next time, guys. All Anytime. right, guys. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all coming on with us. Uh, definitely check out all the links that are going to be below in the show notes because I think there's lots of valuable resources for you guys there. And Pete and Dave, I hope y'all have a, a wonderful evening and thank you again for coming on. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined our Facebook group, go to theadminbar.com forward slash group because we'll probably continue these types of conversations in, in the group there. And uh and we definitely want you to be a part of it. So anyways, that's enough for this one. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.